Uh, in our last episode with local surfer Frode Goa and South African shredder Shannon Ainsley, uh, we reviewed the um, winter season at uh, Jaren, 22-23. Uh, uh, while we were talking about all things waves of Jaren, um, Shannon also mentioned uh, uh, some trips he's been recently doing to Africa. And um, interesting as it is, it has nothing to do with the winter season at Jaren. So I decided to do a special bonus episode where you can hear me, Frude, and sh- primarily Shan talking about his experiences surfing in um, Liberia, Nigeria, and Ghana. This is normally a Norwegian speaking podcast, but uh, when we have international guests like Shan, we try our best to speak English. <laughs> Enjoy. Oi, it's pumping. It's pumping. We need to go surfing. I'm just driven past yours now. Let's go surfing. Or up to you. Choose your weapon of choice. Choose your poison. Meet me there. Let's surf. I'm ready. I'm hungry. Ah! Hi, this is Magne G. Hotna, and now we're going to Reve All Star. Nyte. Jag tänker aldrig kan vi komma så in i en tub. Ja. Om det är en tub där så kommer du kommer du väl in i. Ja men alltså nu. Nå... Um, I've been traveling a lot as you Shan have, but mm. um, I, I gathered in the two two most uh, consistent yeah surfers perhaps. Food and living. Yeah, it's difficult to say that, but I mean. One, two of the most consistent. Uh. Frode living in uh, Reve Harbor, Shit Harbor, and Shan living at uh, Hallister, having prime uh, prime use of the um, of the waves coming in every day. Um, but before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit about Africa because you, Shan, you've been traveling to um, some pretty exotic places, at least for us. I mean, you're an African, so it might be not as exotic for you. But how is it surfing Liberia? Oh man, um, that was a dream come true. I remember like, I think 20 years ago, watching a documentary called Slide in Liberia, which is this documentary based on where this American guy went to Liberia to help out after the Civil War and stumbled across some epic waves. <laughs> and then he went back there with some friends and they documented like the surfing, the history, and the current situation of Liberia. So yeah, it was um, super amazing. And I went to this area called Roberts Port, um, which is, um, I don't know how long it, the coastline is, but they're like say six to seven really good, perfect left-hand point breaks. And there's a town like just five minutes outside of that. And there are about say 35 to 40 surfers who live there, of which only eight of them have surfboards <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a local club over there which is collaborating with provide the slide and provide the slide is a non-profit organization i think it's a bunch of swiss and german guys who try gather a whole bunch of secondhand old boards yeah, and nice. they try distribute that to people in third world countries like this so they nice. brought down a whole bunch of boards and then i went and uh, represented the international surfing association where we ran this development and educational surf program and then anyway this club ended up with a whole bunch of extra boards and nice. yeah so people are pretty stoked Fantastic. there yeah. mm, nice amazing I mean, uh, lefts <laughs> <laughs> go to liberia people i mean i i remember liberia for being a, a civil unrest country you know and uh, of course, the footballer George Weah went to be president at some point. I don't know if he still is. But I mean, how is it traveling in Liberia? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's um, way safer than I expected. Yeah. Um, and the country only recently, over the last few years, started using electricity. And there's no more war. The war ended in 2004 or 2005. And um, there are some new laws in place that if you rape someone or if you... Uh, get into some kind of fight you go to prison so it's very very strict and very safe so i felt safer there than in south africa 
And like, yeah. like you said, I'm African. Oh. So I've been to uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, South Africa. And South Africa is unfortunately the most dangerous out of all of them. Crazy. Yeah. Jesus. So anyway, it was really cool. And people are super social, friendly, hospitable. And uh, this little surf area has such a good opportunity to grow in surf tourism because the waves are epic. Mm -hmm. It is hot and it's a proper jungle and it is so exotic. So uh, I think you should go there. I'm going back next year. <laughs> how, is the, cool. how is the localism going down in Limburg? No such thing. <laughs> <laughs> And the water is warm? Yeah, it's like 30 to 32 degrees Celsius every day. Oh and then the air God. temperature is around the same or hotter. And the humidity was probably the most difficult. It was like yeah. between 80 to 100% humidity Jeez. every day. But the good thing is you can surf. You just yeah. go cool down yeah, in the water. Yeah, cool. So it was really cool. How about... Um, are you, are you, just, uh, do you want to go to Liberia for that? With Shannon, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alone, no. <laughs> It sounds amazing though. How about, the, you also went to Nigeria, didn't you? Yes, yeah, I went to Nigeria doing the same thing with the International Surfing Association. Wow. Uh, went there uh, and also to Ghana for the same thing. Yeah. And then both the places collaborate with nonprofit organizations where they um, try to raise some finances for the education and the development and also to bring a whole bunch of free surfboards for the surfing community. Um, and yeah, Nigeria was amazing. We surfed this Nigerian wedge um, just outside Lagos, and it was wow. so amazing. Just you just like drop into the barrel, you get pitted, oh. and you get a lot of speed, and you do one or two big turns or an aerial. So it was it was an amazing wave. Fruder would love it because you see Fruder trying airs every day. <laughs> so this is the kind of wave where but, he could definitely land an air know, or two. I wouldn't make the drop. <laughs> you, you would. If it's a wedge. Just uh, think of it as like dropping down a bowl. You skate. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Fully. I mean, it's it's funny to think about because um, obviously there's good waves also there, but just because it's not flooded by westerners, I would guess, then it's just uh, under lower low mm. comparatively to other places. But um, yeah, it's a good, a good, uh, good possibility for people being looking into being a little bit exotic. Yeah? For sure. And I think Ghana has probably got the most potential for tourism because it's it's the most, I think it's the safest country in Africa at the moment. Um, and then you have a lot of good waves there. And then I'm not too sure if you ever saw that video or that short video slash documentary of Mick Fanning surfing these mm -hmm. amazing sand bottom uh, right <laughs> point breaks. He surfed this one wave where it just barreled for two kilometers. It's like it's like Donkey Bay or Skeleton uh, Bay in Namibia, but a, a right in tropical <clears throat> water. So that's in Ghana. And um, so if you want really good waves in an, in an exotic area, go to Ghana. It is safe. Like when I say safe, I mean extremely safe. And there are tons of waves. Oh. Crazy. And if you can bring some old boards or something, you can yeah, share, spread good. some yeah. some love and everything to the people. Exactly. Wow. Sounds good.
Det tar jeg aldri, aldri med i beregningen.